Hello and welcome to the video where we're going to talk about how stock markets function. Stock markets serve a really important role in the economy, but stock markets are just made up of individuals and companies that invest in other companies. So really you got to understand what are the motivations of those people involved in those markets. So let's look at why do companies issue stock in the first place? Why would you ever give up some portion of control over a company? And the answer is because otherwise you can't compete with the other companies who do so because you got to use money to make money and you get that money by issuing stock. So ideally the companies who are issuing stock are going to use that money to expand their business, to get new stores or new factories or take on uh, entire new sections or buy up old companies that are uh, failing so they can get the bits and pieces of them that they want. Whatever they're using that stock issuing for, hopefully it's going to make their business more successful in the future and then the value of their stock will go up. And that's why people are willing to buy those stocks because they're really betting on those companies to smartly invest the money that they get from issuing that stock. But that's why individuals are motivated to do it. Let's look at on the whole, what role does it serve? In the banking section of this class, we talked about how banks loan out all the money or not all of it, but they're, not allowed to loan out all of it, but they loan out much of the deposits that they get from individuals and businesses. And that helps to keep the money flowing because the loans that they make from those deposits help people start new businesses, expand old businesses, and then also purchase things, which then puts money back in those new businesses. And it all just sort of cycles on itself. Stock markets are doing a similar thing. They're helping to direct money to companies that are financially successful. Think about it. If all these investors are out there looking for companies that they think, hey, they're going to make really smart investments. They've made smart investments in the past. There's lots of opportunities in what they're buying and selling and trading. So great. I'm going to put my money there. If the company then doesn't do well, that stock price is going to go down and those people will have made a bad choice. But investors who make good choices and uh, make good predictions on which companies are going to do well, they actually get money back as capital gains. And then they can use that money to invest in other companies. So see how the companies who do well are rewarded and the investors who do well are rewarded. So over time, it's this sort of almost natural selection process where the investors who do well, the companies that do well, they're all rewarded and you end up directing money to the most efficient and effective sectors of the economy. Or at least that is how it is supposed to work. And it does not always do that because humans are not entirely rational creatures and we do not have perfect information on how all of these companies will do. So that's the trick that it has a specific role in the economy that it's supposed to serve and it doesn't always do that. But let's talk about the bits and pieces here. How does it actually go down? Stock exchanges are these specific locations where you can buy and sell stocks and bonds. And when I say locations, often they are a specific location. Sometimes they're a digital location. They just exist um, in ones and zeros out there on the internet. But the New York Stock Exchange, that's a place and it's a company that runs it. So it's interesting that stock exchanges are also companies that are running this whole process. And the European one is called Euronext and NASDAQ is the second largest and is also New York City, which is why New York City in the United States is a the, the center of finance for the world. There are other centers. London used to be the main center. Now New York is the main center of finance for the world. Um, stock indexes are different though. So stock indexes are measurements of how the stock markets are doing. The Dow Jones Industrial Average tracks 30 large companies and investors use that to predict whether the stocks are going to go up or down over time or how the entire industrial sector is doing. Because again, remember that all these investors are making investments they think are good and all these companies are doing things that they think will make the investors think that they're doing well. And so in general, that means that we can, if that's working right, we can use that to see how that entire economy section is doing. The S&P 500 is another one of these indexes and it tracks 500 large companies for the exact same reason. When we talked earlier about companies selling their stock, that's actually a very tiny section of what stock exchanges do on a daily basis. Initial public offerings, when companies sell their stock off for the first time, those are actually pretty rare compared to all the buying and selling and trading that happens on a daily basis. 
the primary market, that's where companies offer their stock and actually get money, is again, very small. So most of what happens is not that every time someone buys or sells or trades a stock, that that money does not go to that company that you're buying or selling or trading the stock of. So if you went out right now and bought some Google stock, very unlikely that you're buying it from Google. You're probably buying it from another investor. And that's called a secondary market because investors are just sort of buying and selling and trading stocks amongst themselves. That money does not go to the company. There's ways that companies can maneuver and get their stock back and then sell it back off again and do different things. But in general, primary market happens rare, very rarely. And the secondary market is really the defining feature of how stock markets work. So there's some terminology that investors use to describe different moments in the stock market. And you just want to remember it this way. And it's silly and it's great. And bulls have horns that go up. So if the market is going up, they call it a bull market. You can see here with that green bull and the uh, arrow pointing up, that's a bull market. A bear market, the claws of the bear are pointing down. And that means that the market in general is going down. That doesn't mean that every stock is going up or in a bull market or that every stock is going down in a bear market, but it does mean in general the market is going down. So this is a weird feedback loop that happens because humans are defined by our psychology and our expectations of the market. So if investors think that prices will go up, then they'll buy stocks because they think the prices are going up. And that actually helps to increase prices. On the other side, if investors think that prices are going to go down, then they'll start selling off their stocks, which actually helps to further decrease prices. That has gotten out of control in the past and it will likely do so again in the future. Fortunately, there are groups that monitor stock markets and the practices of companies that participate in those markets, because as you might imagine, there's a lot of reasons that you might want to lie about how successful you are as a company right before your initial public offering. But there's rules for that. And let's take this example of a government regulatory agency called the Securities and Exchange Commission, the shortened to SEC. This protects the public by monitoring the stock markets and the brokers and people who actually engage in buying and selling and trading and enforces all the laws concerning buying and selling of stocks, which especially means uh, enforcing rules about how and when you can and how much you can charge and also uh, how much what information you have to provide if you're participating in a stock market so that no one's being deceitful or at least not illegally deceitful. Let's look at some actual stock performance here. This is Snapchat stock. On the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE, they're listed as SNAP, SNAP. So that's easy to remember. Uh, currently, each share of stock is worth $14.39. Back here at the beginning of the day, each stock was worth $14.90. And yesterday, Snapchat stock closed at $14.39. So that's interesting. We're right exactly where we were yesterday, right now. They don't offer dividends. Um, there's another number of other information down here. The high that they've been over the past 52 weeks was $23.57. But that, you might say, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is just today? Yeah, look at all the up and down. Past five days, oop, went down a little bit. Uh, past five days, started up here at $15.95, almost $16. And then now we're in a fairly lower spot. If you look over one month, not a promising line. One year, suddenly that line doesn't look as bad. We're just returning to where we had been in the past. So imagine if you bought stock here, 1352, and then you sold, you were lucky enough to sell right as it got up to 2075, every share of stock that you bought down here at like $13, you'd be selling for 20. So you're making $7 per share. That could have been a fair amount of money you made there, depending on how many shares of stock you bought. Over five years, I believe that is the max, yeah. So when Snapchat first offered its stock, it was at 2709. So if you bought it there and you had or were forced to sell it today, you would have lost a lot of money, more than $10 per share. So this is how you actually read one of these graphs and look at this chart. And this one is for Snapchat stock, which I believe angered a celebrity recently, which is why it, it tanked in the more recent uh, setup, just before March. 
So it's interesting, right? There's something that happens out there in the economy. You get someone mad at you, and then all of a sudden people don't think you're going to do as well as a company, and then your stock plummets. On your learning check for today, you have this stock market information chart. And just like we were talking about with Snapchat stock just now, there are lots of different things that can influence not just individual stocks, but in fact, whole sections of the economy. So it might not just be that one company has done something dumb and gotten themselves in trouble. There may be some larger movement within the world or in terms of resources that actually changes how people assume stocks will do in the future. For example, if it looks like unemployment claims are going down, that generally means that the market is going to be pretty healthy uh, because there are more jobs available for people, more people have money, more people will be buying things. That's good. But tricky part about this is it's difficult to anticipate what people will actually think of all these different changes. For example, when unemployment claims started going down significantly and people's wages, like workers' wages, started to go up, that started to make all the investors worried that uh, the inflation was going to go up in the economy and that would make the Federal Reserve raise interest rates because that's part of their job of managing the money supply and keeping inflation down and that raising those interest rates would make it more difficult to get loans and then all of a sudden these companies who've been getting really, really cheap loans would have a harder time doing it and do you see how it sort of swirls on itself and then so the stock market actually went down when it turned out that people's wages were going up. So the stock market is not a perfect reflection of, say, the health of an economy. It's really just a betting system of what you think these stock prices are going to do over time. But some things are a little easier to track. For example, auto and truck sales. If that went up from last month, then you might expect that because this area of the economy is doing better, maybe even the Dow Jones Industrial Average is probably going up as well. So just go through this chart and follow the directions above. If you think it might go both ways, then why not write something over here on this side to tell me why? And this has been learning about how stock markets actually function.